How many ways could you arrange your three apples? Six. Sure. Oh, how'd you get the six? <laughs> Here's just a good guess. How many choices do you have for the first one? Times. That would be the three factorial. You guys were right, those of you who said that, for sure. Now, here's the cool thing about this. This this would be the number of arrangements that actually do not change my big picture. Does that make sense to you? So if I change those apples around, there's six ways I could do three factorial. There's six ways I could do that and not change this picture. For instance, if I labeled this first apple, second apple, third apple, I could do one, two, three. I could do one, three, two. Uh, let me do this. One, three, one, two, three, one, three, two, um, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, two, one, three, one, two. That's six ways I could arrange those. Is that changing the overall look of it? We need to somehow eliminate those choices, and here's how we do it. If we want to eliminate those choices of arrangements that don't really matter, we're going to divide them out. That's how we eliminate things with our factorials. We're going to say, okay, we would normally have ten factorial. That would be for unique items. However, I have some things that are the same. One thing that's the same is my apples. There's three of them that are exactly the same. If there's three of them that are exactly the same, there's three factorial arrangements that don't change my big picture. So I'm going to get rid of those three factorial. Tell me something else I need to get rid of. Why oranges? How many oranges do we have that are the same? So what else am I going to divide by? Anything else? Bananas. How many bananas? <laughs> Come, Mr. Tallyman, tell me banana. Just kidding. Yeah, you have five bananas here. If you label these one, two, three, or five, there'd be five factorial arrangements that you could order that would not affect your big picture. How many people understand this idea? So every time we have non-unique items, such as our apples, our oranges, our bananas, we're going to divide out by that number of items that are non-unique factorial. If we have n non-unique items, we're divided by n factorial, here and here and here. That limits some of those arrangements that actually don't matter. Let me put this into some, some in, general, in general words here. For non-distinct or non-unique or non-different items, <laughs> for n total items, we'd have n factorial different arrangements we could make. Every time that we have some set of items that is not distinct, we're going to divide that out. So n1 factorial, n2 factorial, blah, 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 all the way down to where we stop. Where n1, n2, n3 are the count of non-distinct items, or items that are the same. n total items, n1, n2, n3, and so on, are numbers of non-distinct items. Okay, so let's recap a second, go over everything we, we were just talking about. First thing, different arrangements are called permutations. We're trying to look for different arrangements when we're talking about that. If we have a distinct set of items, such as, such as here, our people, the number of items that we have to choose from gives us n factorial different arrangements, for sure. If we're only looking for a certain number of those people, we're taking NPR, or selecting R out of n total choices, and this is the way we show we don't want the, the rest of those arrangements. We can do this on a calculator, or we can do that with a formula. That's great. If we happen to have some non-distinct items, so items that are the same, 
the way we show the different arrangements, or the ones that really matter, is we have our n factorial. That would be everything if it were all distinct. But we're going to take away or eliminate some of those arrangements here, 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 of those items that are the same. Because they don't really change the big picture of my arrangements. Would you raise your hand if you're still with me on this, this idea? Good deal. Let's practice one of these to really get the hang of it. Oftentimes you'll see, you'll see this type of problem with, uh, with this situation here. It's a question that asks, how many words could you make up if I just gave you a set of letters? So what's your favorite word? Statistics, of course. I know I can read your mind. So our favorite word is statistics. That's my favorite word. <laughs> favorite word is statistics. What I want to know is how many ways could we arrange the letters to get different quote-unquote words. Now some of them aren't going to make sense at all, but how many ways could we arrange these letters? How many different ways could you arrange these letters. I don't know. Let's look what happened over here with this problem. Let's actually calculate this thing, then we'll, we'll, we'll move back over here. What does this do when we're dividing out the 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 5 factorial? By the way, what, what does the, the 10 factorial actually mean? Don't all talk at once. It's really annoying. You know. What's the 10 factorial mean? Say what now? So it's a multiplication problem, right? So the 10 factorial means where, where do you start at? And you multiply by what number next? So this means. That means that. That's what, we write it like this because it's a lot easier, but that, that means that right there. You're okay with that so far, right? What does the 3 factorial mean? So this little piece gives us 3 times 2 times 1. That's just that, that piece. We're multiplying all that stuff. What's the 2 factorial mean? How about the 5 factorial? Well, we know that means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we had our 3 factorial, our 2 factorial, and our 5 factorial. Do you see what's going to happen when we divide out these numbers of arrangements? Do you see that our number is going to ultimately get a lot smaller? Because we're dividing, right? Can you see some things that simplify? Sure, what simplifies? Oh, this is all great. 5 factorial is right here, and 5 factorial is right there. Those are completely gone. Anything else? Remember how to simplify some fractions? Look at the factors on the numerator and denominator that are the same. What else do you have up here? Say it louder, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Say it, what do, you, what do you simplify? These are fractions, come on. Hmm? Three, and nine. three and nine, okay, that's great. How many times does three go into three? One. And into nine? Three. Keep going, what else? Two, two and six or eight. Okay, we'll do the 8, and this 2 maybe with this 6. We're doing this because there's really no cheap way to do this on a calculator. Okay, you have to, you have to do this long ways. Um, so in order to really multiply this out easily, we're going to simplify everything we can and then start multiplying. So what do we have left that we need to multiply? 10 times what? 3 times 4 times 7 times Anything else? <laughs> we simplified everything else. Have you done that already? Yeah. Let's do 10 times 3 times 4 times 7 times 3. Love it? If you did 10 factorial, you're going to get a huge number. 
huge number. But when we consider that we don't have distinct items, like our apples, oranges, bananas, that really limits what we have. There's only 2,520 ways we can arrange these pieces of fruit that would be different. Now, let's see what happens with our statistics problem. Do we have the same scenario we have had over here? We have a certain number of items. How many items do we have in this case? Items are letters here. How many letters do we have? Okay, oh, 10, again, wow, that's weird. Do we have any of the letters that are the same? So for instance, if I switch this T and this T, if I just went, would you be able to tell the difference in this word? Those T's are the same, same thing like our apples and our oranges. So we would initially have 10 factorial different items to arrange. If these were different items, that's how many arrangements we would get out of it. But now we've got to divide by all the items that are the same. Give me one of the items that are the same. How many S's? So what are we going to divide by? Three. Just three? <laughs> okay, three factorial. Uh, anything else? T's. How many T's? Three. That's another three factorial. Anything else? I's. I's. How about anything else? How about the A? A only happens once. If you divide by one factorial, you're divided by one. That really doesn't do anything. So we're just counting kind of greater than one, well, any repeats that we actually have. Why don't you see if you can figure this one out? Go ahead and write it out and see what, how many arrangements we get that are different out of the word statistics. If you finish that quickly, why don't you try one more? How many ways could well, you have a lot of kids? You have twelve kids. How many ways could you plan to have a family with seven girls and five boys? Try that one if you finish your statistics first. I'll be walking around. If you need help with this, let me know. That's a good work so far. Okay. So we do have to write out the 10 times 9 times 8. We have to write out the factorial because we're now simplifying our fractions. So on our fractions, we have our 3 factorial, which in this case, becomes 3 times 2 times 1. We have another 3 factorial. And then we have